Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are looking at our top 10 anticipated games for 2020. Dun dun dun. Do we need to set some parameters? Nervous anticipation or excited anticipation? My list is the greatest list of all the lists of all time. I no, hope that Meeple Town notes that. I want you to... It's actually not. I, it's, <laughs> even just before this video I was making some changes because I've got a list of about... I don't know, maybe 25 games that could have made this list pretty Who wants easily. to listen to Dean's list that he's not even confident in? You do. I mean, he tell. was confident and then he lost the confidence. <laughs> Let's so do it. Can, Let's jump into it. All right, so my number 10 game is a game that uh, I wanted to kickstart and then it was so expensive, so expensive. And it's a lighter game and I thought this is not worth it. I mean, it was going to be like, I think $150 for the Kickstarter for this game, which is a family, That's a lots of money, a family weight game. This is a Bruno Cathala game that I like. I like Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Montblanc, Montblanc. Um, and so it, this is a, also a reprint. So kind of Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. So in this game, it is an Egyptian theme look game. At that bad boy yeah, right there. like you look at some of these pictures on here and it is uh, good internet there, John. It's not that bad. That's not an actual screenshot anyway. That's uh these are some of the computer generated shots. But um anyway the game are pretty sweet. You know how I feel about components, right? That's why you that's why I made the list just because of those. I'm shallow. I know exactly why. What can I say? Look at that. Like you you feel like you're actually building up a building from Who ancient cares? Egypt. I don't care about Who that. Who cares about what the actual game is about? But that's it. Like that really is it. Like you are <laughs> Oh my gosh. You're building up Oh you're building up this structure. I mean that that's how like that's how you're getting points. That's how you're signaling the end of the game when you actually do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's you can read about it if you want, but who cares? Can we move on to mine? It's now? a bunch of toys that you get to play with. <laughs> so anyway, I'm I'm pumped mostly for the designer. It's a game that got a lot of uh, a lot of recognition when it came out. I think it was 2006, 2007. Uh, it was a pretty. Um, it was up for a lot of awards, and it you know. It was known to be a. a good because you're family flaunting game. the awards just to try to boost your. How many of your games here? have been. None, because all away. mine are actually new games. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's my number 10. Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. All right, so my number 10 mm -hmm. is Chrono Corsairs by Tasty Minstrel Game. Now, games. Now, the reason that I'm interested in this, there's a couple things. Number one, Tasty Minstrel just consistently puts out good games, right? You gotta say that. That's true. Uh, they all they consistently put out good games, which I absolutely um, love about them. In addition, the the theme of this is just it's just it's so interesting to see that it's a pirate game. Are an actual pirate game, not like Maracaibo. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's an actual pirate game, and you play the same day over and over and over again, like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Which I just think the theme is just for me. It's straight up the theme mixed with it being tasty minstrel. And you got this like interesting looking rondelle here in the middle. I think that that's uh, that is pretty cool. So I'm gonna flip through a couple of these pictures, let y'all take a look at that. And uh, yeah, because of that, look at that thing. Yeah. Look at that thing in the middle. It looks pretty. I'm surprised you didn't put this on. This seems like it's super up your alley. It is. I think I'll like this game. But it's you know I mentioned I had a list of at least 25. It may have been more than that. But I was like. These could be in my top 10. This yeah. was probably more in my like top 15, I'd say. This is one I'm really, I'm excited to try this one out. Yep, I'm excited sure. to try, try that as well. There we go. Okay. All right, my number nine is a game that is higher on your list, and so we're not going to spend Whoops. any time talking about I it. I just showed everybody what it was, but yeah. let's not talk about it. All right. It's a Martin Wallace game. You know I like Martin Wallace, Deck Builder, all that. We'll talk about it after. Rocket Man. It's, yeah, Rocket Man. Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> it. All right, yeah, because it's further up my list. It is. It soared up my list. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, it is what it Use is. Use that joke in the podcast, though. I use I the don't. same joke a lot. <laughs> I have three jokes. That was one of, <laughs> that was one of them right there. <laughs> good stuff. All right. So my number nine is a game that I think Dean said, mm, maybe I should put that on my list when we were talking before this, and that's Alma Mater. Yeah. And I just I think the theme is really cool. You're representing the school's reputation, and you're trying to go up in your knowledge and different things like that. But the thing that's really drawn me into it simply over everything is just the designers, right? So um, before I botch some designer names, because what's going to happen is this, for those of you who don't know, John is going to try to say a designer name, 
and the trolls are gonna come out on the YouTubes and they're gonna be like, you didn't say that right. And so guess what I'm gonna do? Not say the names. Wow. It's like that. You wanna try to stop me? You wanna try to put me in my place? That ain't gonna happen today. We'll put the we'll put your name at the bottom. That ain't happening. Instead of listening to John's rant. It ain't happening. So I'm gonna put your name up there. <laughs> it ain't happening today. Okay. okay. Um, but so we've got we have designers. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say the names now. I was going to, but now, I, now I've already said that rant. I can't do it now. Um, that have done uh, Coimbra, uh, Terramara that just came out. Um, just a lot of really, really good games. This is a great designing pedigree right here. So I can't wait to play this. Also, I'm a big fan of Eggert Spill. They come out with a lot of really good games. So I am fired up with the theme, the designers, with the publisher. I think this is going to hit on all cylinders. Too bad this isn't a car game, but... There we go. It's going to get Take A's to in school. the classes. It's going to school you. This is a game also that would have been in somewhere up in that list. This one looks really cool. I like the, I think the theme on this is is pretty unique. I would say so. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really cool. I, I should click on a few of these real quick before we move on <clears> to your <throat> list number eight. I can't talk about that one either. So Look at that. Some nice art. Like nice and clean. Look at that, look at that, yeah. look at that lady right there, I'm liking that. That does. Looks pretty sharp. Does look good. Really nice looking concept art. It looks like that's uh, computer generated there. Mm -hmm. I like it. Look at those books. I know you're digging those books. I love books. <laughs> All right, let's All get right. to my number eight. Right, number eight is yes. a game that we can- Your number eight is my number eight. Oh, so we so talked about let's do the together. reveal together. Our number Dice eight. Rounds. It was my turn. Son of a gun. <laughs> Dice. Dice Realms, it's my turn. We're supposed to do things together. Did Sorry, one, two, on three, the... Dice Realms. So in Dice Realms, this I'm is I'm not a... doing it again. I'm I'm not even gonna do the rest of this video. Okay, I'll do I'll do John's list. All right, so Dice Realms is a Thomas Lehman, I'm not skipping a beat, is a Thomas Lehman game, which is good, right? Uh, Real Grande game. First of all, if I showed my underwear right then, I apologize, Maple Town. <laughs> I think it might happen. Continue. <laughs> all right, so this is a Dice um, manipulation game in the sense of like Dice Forge or the um, the expansion rivalry for Roll for the Galaxy yeah. where you are actually forging pieces of this actually the, the bits look just like the one from the ones rivalry. from rivalry yeah. yeah like you put these little circle disc onto the dice and you're changing up the dice and it's Thomas Lehman Dude, that's and all it's you real really, grande. They that's put all, great right. Stuff. That's the real grande. That's all you really need to know. That's all I needed that's to know. That's a cool picture right there with the dice that's got the realms showing up there. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's named Dice Realms. Yep. Yeah, I'm hype on this game. I'm really excited. The, um, art, the art looks cool. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm into that, like, I like dice, dice manipulation. I yeah, I think it's really cool. I, yeah, I, I like, I really like that idea. And Layman does. I mean, he did, makes great games. So yeah, uh, number eight for me, number eight for Dean. Yeah. I'm. We are both really excited about this one. So yeah. hopefully, if we get a review copy, I'll get to keep it. We'll have to fight about that one. Dibs. Maybe it's we'll, called dibs. You know, we'll roll for it. There we go. All right. So my number. I seven. lost count. My number seven. <laughs> Clicking all over. This is not my computer, by the way. You're not even on your name. Track You're on Johnny Meeple Towns. All right. So, Adventures in Never Neverland is my number seven game. Seven? Yes. Number seven. My number seven game, Adventures in Neverland. I am drawn to the theme for one. I love Peter Pan. Yeah. The I don't know. The designer is, is Vicky Swerz. I believe um, Black Box Adventures. If I remember right, I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that is... Uh, this is her uh, first game. I think that's right. Really? Uh, I might be wrong. Interesting. But, okay, the thing about this game is... Click on some of them pictures. The, the theme for one. Why don't you Check click on out. the pictures? Because yeah, apparently my fingers don't work. Um, the, the theme is what really draws me to this, that's this cool. game. Because that it's a, a Neverland, Peter Pan theme. But it also just, like, when I read the gameplay description, it sounds cool as well. Let me, let me read some of this to you. So this is... Um, in Adventures in Neverland, it's a game for two to four players, but there's six playable characters in this. Um, it's got loads of adventures, numerous side quests, the double-sided game board, random locations, and global events all affect the island, reimagining Neverland every time you play 
the game. It's an immersive storytelling game, is what it says on here. So that's cool. I I think it's really you no. Know, ultimately, it's it's a you know whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. But the the theme seems like it might really draw me yeah. in. So anyway, I'm I'm pumped about this one. I want to check it out. Yeah, I'm. You know, whenever they come up with an IP that I'm excited about, I always brace myself for disappointment. But it yeah, looks one, it looks really on. cool. So that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to wait until Dean plays it, and if he tells me it's great, then I'm down with it. It looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. Yep. yep. No no uh, complaints nope. or disagreements about that. I mean, it's all It's a wait and see. It may be amazing. Yeah. I don't know. We're just speculating whether or not we're going to like it or not. But it looks cool. I love the theme. Adventures in Neverland. That's my number seven. Well, we're not speculating. Spe speculating. <laughs> that's not even a word. I'm really proving my intelligence today. <laughs> what we're not speculating about is my number seven, and that is Brazil. Okay. And you are speculating. You've not played this, oh, have you? It doesn't matter. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. Right. I'm pretty excited about it. Look at this. Dude, look. look. It's a game about gold mining in 18th century Brazil, which is, I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? I'm look sorry. At, I fell asleep. What would you say? What? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I mean... Gold mining in the 18th century Brazil. Who, who doesn't want to do that? Who I doesn't mean, want to go back and do that? All right. Given the option, would you rather sail on a boat in Neverland fighting pirates or gold gold mining in the 18th century Brazil? Well, it depends on... Now, I now Vicky may be an amazing designer. Mm -hmm. But Sintiero and Soledade okay. are amazing. Okay. These guys make great games. Tell me what they do. Okay. Nippon. Okay. You haven't played any of them, so you don't care. <laughs> I haven't played either one of them. So stop hating on it. All right, I'm not look, hating on it. It might be let's, great. Let's look at some pictures. Let's, look, let's, let's entice Dean by looking at some component pictures. Maybe. All right. <laughs> oh, those, but you know what? It's a Euro look, game. I mean, I love Euro games. I, I think the, those hexes look nice. It's got so nice... Pretty much it's a lot of prototype stuff on here and stuff. But I just think, I think what those guys designed these, this game, um, I like the theme. I think it looks really, really cool. It actually talks about like... Go back to that cover for a second. Sorry, you keep talking. It talks also about like like using car, playing with cards and stuff like that, which I think is interesting because I always like um, card-based actions and different things like that. This just overall, just everything I've read about it just screams like... I just think it's... I just really think it's going to be an incredibly well-designed game that's going to be an absolute blast. I'm pretty hype on this. This one could have gone up higher on my list, um, but it didn't, I guess. So there you go. Um, I'm really excited about this. This could this could be absolutely fantastic. You know, funny enough, at first when you showed me that game, looking at the cover, I was like, man, I kind of like that cover. I don't oh, know. I think the cover's looks, awesome. It looks pretty cool. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this game's going to be great. I, I you guarantee it? Look at that. Rado's playing it. There we go. It's got to be good. It's got to be good if he's playing it. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna email Rado and tell him that you, your list is better than his because you said that you had the best list. <laughs> All right. Speaking of better list, my number six is a game that when I talked about on the podcast because this was initially number five, you're gonna notice that I've added a a game to my list that was not in the podcast list. Uh, but when I talked about it as my number five, somebody came on and said, "Hey, that's not gonna release until." I think 2021. It's not kickstarting until this year, but it says 2020 online, so I'm going for You're it. Gonna go for it. Role player adventures. Role player this adventures. Is a, they have a lot of pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should have I should have known that it wasn't going to be released because there's not a lot of pictures on there. But uh, but I've still kept it on here because it does say 2020, and I probably actually it really skews my list because I would have put Ankh on here. I think it says 2020 and I doubt it's going to it be does, out. Yeah. But anyway, Role Player Adventures is a follow-up game to the role-playing series, the role-playing uh, role-player universe. So like the the dice drafting game, Role Player is the first one in that series. I think Cartographers kind of fits in that world and then you've got Role Player Adventures which is a kind of a, a story, like more of a story driven game. Those other ones don't really have any kind of theme to them necessarily. But in this one, it does. It says your role player characters have been called to adventure and monsters and minions you went to war against Dragul invaders and uh, fiends and familiars you, bef you befriended wild beast, yada, yada, yada. But now you have this game that's a cooperative storybook board game for one to four players set in the world of role player. Now you can actually, if I remember this right, you can use your characters that you've created from role player, use those characters in this game. 
Um, but I like the idea of the cooperative storybook board game because uh, if you've ever played this, I don't know if it's exactly like this, but if you've played like Stuff Fables or Aftermath, which I've not played Aftermath, but games like that where the, the book is the game board and as you're flipping through it, the game board changes. I like that idea and it seems like this one might be geared more towards um, not kids. Not that it's not family friendly, I think, but you know, the, the other games by... Um, uh, help me out, Plat Hat games that have used that style have been kind of geared more towards families, whereas this one may not be. It might be a little more advanced. It's actually ages 14 and up. So anyway, I'm interested in this to check it out. Uh, that's all I got to say. I haven't played any of the role-playing games except for cartographers in the same universe. So honestly, I have no idea. I have no opinion one way or the other, but uh, I think I'll get to play it one day maybe. There we go. And then I will That's have my number six. An opinion. My number six is a game that I don't even know how it's not on your list. How is My City not on your list, Dino? There's a lot of games. Reiner Knizia like does Reiner a Knizia. legacy Civ building game, and it's not on your list. Yep. It's because it's the legacy one. I doubt that I'll get to play this, really. They added um, some more pictures I, since the other day. I started my Pandemic Legacy game like two years ago now, and we are in September, I think. I it's think never going to happen. It, it might not happen, but I do think this game looks really cool. There you go. We've got some polyomino yeah. shapes, which I like. It looks fantastic, yeah. I think. I think this is going to be... Re I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited about it. I'm, I am. I just think Reiner Kinesia mixed with Civ um, and Legacy. I'm just really intrigued by it. Now, it may not. Maybe it's... I mean, there are games that Reiner Kinesia has made that I think are fantastic, and there are games that he's made that I think are meh. So, it's a little bit of a risky one, but let's play. You want to play a little roulette? You want to throw some craps? Let's do it right here with this game. All right. All right, your turn. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. That was a good you pitch. You feeling lucky? It's a good pitch for you. You feeling lucky, punk? Wow, that's really harsh. I Are appreciate you? appreciate that. Hurts my feelings. All right, my number five. 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 I don't have numbers on here. I should have done that. They're on my phone over here. Numbers so are hard sometimes. My number five was my number four on the podcast, and it is a game where I, I okay. Here's the thing. I'm more intrigued by this game to say to see how can this actually work, and that's Cosmic Encounter, Cosmic Encounter Duel, which is the two-player game to one of my top fifty games called Cosmic Encounter, and I just. Really, I'm just intrigued to see yeah. how this how this is going to play out. So it says it's a competitive standalone two-player game in the Cosmic Encounter universe in which you and your closest frenemy race to be the first to control five planets. So it works just like uh, right here. Look at that guy. Just like in Cosmic Encounter, like that's the same idea. You've got a ton of different alien races that you're going to be using, um, but. The the reason why I like Cosmic Encounter so much is because of the the high level of player interaction when you play with a bigger group, of, you know, five to uh, you know five to seven ish people. Um, when you're playing that game, that the interaction with the other players is what makes the game. So I'm intrigued to see how this is going to work with two players. You like that art? Yes, cool. I do. I like the original art for Cosmic Encounter. I actually like this. I think even better than that's what I was wondering if that. you like it better than the original art. I don't know if I do or not. It's it's car more cartoony. Yeah, for um, sure, 100 percent for sure. Yeah, I'm. I've never played Cosmic Encounter actually, so I never played Cosmic Encounters at all. But this really intrigues me because of what you said. And I've always wanted to play though. So this this is one of those games that I just have never played that I've always wanted to play. And yeah, I'm actually really intrigued by this one. How can you do it two player and make it good? Yep. We're going to find out. Prove us wrong. I mean, you're not proving us wrong because I do have some expectations. Yeah, I mean, it's number five game. on your list, so it wouldn't yep. be proving you wrong. I feel like with a you game like this... have reservations with your expectations? Maybe. Maybe. I think... You can quote me on that. I, I think with this one, I feel like if somebody came to you, like, here I am, Fantasy Flight, somebody pitches me Cosmic Encounter Duel, I would be really skeptical. And so for that reason, I kind of feel like... Maybe this is a good game because I don't think they would just throw that out there. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. We will see. All right. My number five is a game that is going to be amazing again because my list is better than Dean's. All right. This is what we do back and forth. There we go. Twa Dice. I absolutely, this is simple. I love Twa. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And I will say that I was a little hesitant because it's a roll and write game, which roll and writes 
don't typically are not typically my favorite games. Um, there's some good ones out there, but they don't go really high on the list. But I did see some gameplay for this game, and um, there's actually there's a little bit of a video. I'll just scroll down here. You can um, look at this and check this out. It was really good, really good. It sounded like there's just some really interesting decisions that you're making um, in this game as you're chucking those dice. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I, I mean, for me, it's all about it's got the name Twa on it, and it's. And I, when I watched that video, it looked really solid. So pretty simple. Why I'm excited about it? I think it'll be great. We'll see. We will see. Uh, I mean, you're I'm, interested in that. One. Yeah, but I have not played Twa. Surprisingly, it's. I think it probably at the top of that and Great Western Trail of games that I haven't played that I really want to. So anyway, I hope to. I hope maybe this will get me to play Twa. Maybe we can do a, a showdown between them or something like that. So. I think that would be an amazing experience for you. And for me. All right. Why do you guys say it all weird? Wait, don't click on it. Next. Oh! All right. You ready for this? All right. So this, if you listen to the podcast, you know this is on my list. Now, this Wonderland's is game. more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You did it to me. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> okay. I talk about being a component junkie and an art <laughs> junkie on, on the show. Like, I'm very shallow in the games that I pick. But here's the thing. The theme of this drew me in. It's a cool the, theme. The uh, Druid City and Skybound game combo drew me in. All right. The uh, the designers drew me in because of some games I like. We talked about some podcasts, but like Dual Sword Island and uh, what's the uh, Grim Grim Forest is another one that that you know from the people that that did this. That's exciting to me. But here's the description. You ready for this? Man, I'm I was born ready. The first sentence. In this drafting, I'm sorry, the first sentence in the second paragraph. In this, I drafting, was so confused because I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, in this drafting, bag building, area control game, two to five players take the role as as faction leader who has been invited to the Hatter's Tea Party. You that does me. sound really good. You sold me, even if the components didn't look amazing. Which I will say, these are the most amazing components and art that we will see in any of the games that we that are listed today. Wow. Look really? It. It's incredible. I know, but that, that's, still a, that's still a strong statement. Look it. Are you looking? Look it. Yeah, but Feast, we saw some pretty good art on Feast your eyes. All right, I'm trying to get past all this, too, because I want to see... This is boring, Dean. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> all right. That was such a loud, weird um, laugh. Okay, so those are using cardboard standees, but then we get wow, into... Wow, dude, I'm not even interested in anymore. Gracious. Look, you're just... You're just how You're ruining I, it now. How do I get there? How do I? <laughs> I don't know, but cardboard standees. I'm All right, not so, excited about. No, that's not exciting. But okay, look at the art on the cards there. Got okay, it. All right. Whatever. You the blew chips, it. The chips look fantastic, but also at some point we're going to get to miniatures that will end up getting painted. You know the good thing about this right here is it shows. Go back to that last one. Is that it shows the black tablecloth with dust on it? So it I don't feel, feel so bad whenever we do that. That's that's probably right. I'm sorry if that happens. All right, so. I'm I'm really really Those pumped about this game. Again, theme alone kind of kind of drew me in, but then you just list those some of my favorite game mechanisms. I'm I'm pumped about this game. Yeah, it would be on my short list. I'm not convinced it's coming out this year, so that also kept me from. It might be my number list. one on my 2021 list. Yeah, <laughs> I actually <laughs> considered good... moving this up even higher, but then I was like, no, nah, it's probably not going to be out, so I'll just leave it because I'm that pumped about it. Yeah, I'm it. excited about this one too. We'll see. Good choice. Yep. All right, so my number four is Dean's number, what was that, your eight? I think it was nine. your number eight. It was my number nine. Number nine, okay. That is a Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Which is on Kickstarter right now. Now, if you're edi editing this video, it definitely won't be ready before the Kickstarter's over. <laughs> I got you. Because he I'm, takes I'm a, a slower minute. editor. He, on he the takes videos. a minute on those videos. I see what you did there. But I will say uh, that without a doubt, I mean, Martin Wallace already intrigues me, right? I mean, there's no doubt. But and also, I think I probably like Martin Wallace better than you do. Probably. Maybe. I maybe. Like, I like a lot of his games. Um, I I do too. I do too. And um, the th space theme sounds really cool. I, I'm really into that. And I, you know, I like a great you know deck building game, man. I think that it's just uh, it just looks absolutely fantastic. I've seen a little bit of video on it. Um, the price point's amazing. I mean, it's the it's, price. Yeah, the, I mean, US was like it's like thirty bucks for the cheapest version of it. Mm -hmm. So that's like that's crazy, and this looks awesome. I mean, this I, I just I like the decisions that you're using your cards to to buy more cards to upgrade, and there, there's some definitely push your luck in this game as well. I just heard some really positive things about it. Um, yeah, so I'm super intrigued. You too, huh? Yep. 
Astute. <laughs> Very astute observation. Yeah, yeah, for all those all those things. Um, funny enough, like this wasn't like super, super on my radar. You brought it more to my attention yeah. and, and said, hey, you're you're probably really gonna like this game. So I'm I'm definitely interested in checking this one out as well. Obviously, because it was my number nine. You can't even remember what it was. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's gonna be great. Can't wait for that one. All right, your number three. My number three is a game that is uh, kind of a, a reprint of sorts, and that is Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Uh, I've already seen an unboxing of this. This one it was kickstarted, and it's, it was supposed to have been out in 2019. There was a little bit of a delay on it, but uh, I think it's gonna be fantastic. Now, Eclipse is a game that I've not played before, but the theme is something, this, this space um, kind of 4X-ish, game uh and it's miniatures it, it kind of gets yeah the miniatures obviously the components are great if you want to scroll through some of those um do you want to read those words the, right now you can, the, you can do it on your screen yeah i've got it pulled up on here so it's right. um places you control of a vast interstellar civilization competing for success um with its rivals so one of the things the reason why i haven't really played this game in the past is because it uh has has been said to not have like really strong theme in it, that it's more of a Euro. But the more I look up and, and watch videos and, and read on this game, I think it's a game that I actually would like quite a bit. And I do think that the theme, the theme is probably stronger than some others out there like to admit, maybe. But again, I haven't played the original, so I don't know that for sure. But I think this is a game that I am going to really, really enjoy once we can get this one to the table. The price point on the Kickstarter was a little high, so, um, you know, not, but I, I think it's, it, this is one that I can understand because there's a lot going on oh, in this game. Oh, sure, yeah. I'm definitely not faulting the game for that. It was just for me at the time to order this wasn't really uh, an option. So anyway, hopefully I'll get a chance to play this one this year. Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy. I'm interested in that one as well. All right, so my number three, I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised it's not on your list, is a Shim Phillips, his next game. Shim knocks it out. I mean, he does a great job. He 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 hits he hits solid triples, and he hit a home run with Paladins of the West Kingdom, in my opinion. Okay. He does great. <laughs> Viscounts of the West Kingdom looks like it's going to be cool. There's not a whole lot about it except for I just know, hey, it's got some dragon meeples on there. It does. It's got that kind of rondelle looking thing there in the middle, which you know, Daddy likes that. So I'm I'm I, it looks. It looks like it's got some different things in some of his games, you know what I mean? Some different mechanics, maybe, than yeah. what, what we've seen in the past. And so I'm really intrigued by that. I heard it's potentially in the weight between Paladins and Architects, which I definitely preferred something a, a little bit heavier. That's why I really liked Paladins. But I enjoy Architects, for sure. Um, so that's that, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't. there's just not a whole lot about it yet. But what I've, what I've... I mean, not what I've seen. It's I just want to play it. I really want to play it. He Every time I play his games, I like him. Yep. So, why not play another one? Yeah, I, I'm interested in this one as well. And I, I like Architects, and um, I really like Architects and, and Paladins both. Yeah. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, I think that this one might, this one does intrigue me more than Paladins because it is on that uh, lighter weight scale. The theme could show strong with the what I like to call the Dragon Meeple, which is actually not a Dragon Meeple, but at first it's glance not. it was, and I got super pumped. And it's just a Horse Meeple. That's Who why cares? it's not on my list because there's no dragons in this oh game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, here's something interesting. Okay. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game wins. Hi, Karumba. Yep. All right. My number two is my number one on the podcast list. That is Trudvong Legends, which is a. It miniatures. Does, it does have miniatures. <laughs> it's. Do you have any games with no miniatures on your list? <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of miniatures on my list. That is that is. More... I think that you have miniatures on every single one of your games. I even yeah, yeah. This is it's a beautiful game. There's no there's <laughs> there's no doubting that. So this is what I kickstarted for one. This is a come on limited game. I love their games. I typically love their games. I'm gonna click through a few of these. Eric okay. Lang is involved in the design process of this one. Now here's the thing that really um, I don't know anything. It's it's based on a Swedish RPG. Um, I don't really know anything about the RPG, but the thing that interests me in this game one is this the storytelling aspect. The world you know really draws me in. I think it's it all sounds really cool. But the board, if you can pull up, I don't know if you're able to pull up a picture of the board, but with the board, you've got these little pockets where the cards go in. So when you do things, yeah, you can see the little squares on there. So when you do things in the game, 
um, you know, like that triggers a story element. You're going to put a card into the board. You know, that's I've not played the game and not many people have played the game, it seems like, um, because they want to keep the story itself kind of under wraps. Um, but the board changes. It's almost a legacy style because you're going to put those cards in and then when but you wrap not, the game up, right? you just fold the game up. Those cards are still in there. It's not legacy. They oh. can come back out. You can reset it or whatever. But the board itself does change with those cards based on events that have happened previously in the game. So that is really interesting to me. I'm I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, it it's, it's um, yeah. I'm it, I'm intrigued. Yeah, I wouldn't say excited. I'm intrigued. I am pumped. It was my number one game, and then one just came out of nowhere. Well, let me. Yeah. We're, it's, it's, it, his number one is my number two. And the good thing is, is that there's a lot about it on Board Game Geek, so. <laughs> it is not true. I'm not gonna say the name of the game. You mean click it? Uh, not yet, I wanna set it up. So with this one, you. I really wanna click it. <laughs> Don't click it. You can click it. The, the game wasn't announced until our podcast was already released. And so we didn't know anything about this game. Now we know tons about it. <laughs> yep. We don't. We know the name of it, which is a... The Castles of Tuscany. Yes. I am fired up, baby. Here's what the description says. At this moment, The Castles of Tus Tuscany is a standalone game that might resemble The Castles of Burgundy in some way. All right, my number one that's is... En that's enough to boost it up to my number one and your number two spot because... Yes. Castles of Burgundy is in my top five games of all time, pretty sure. It's in, that's right. Top it, ten for around sure. My, it's in my top 20, at least. I love Castles of Burgundy, so do you. We're just pumped about it, and we both like Feld in general. I absolutely and yeah, that's all. That's all. The we have. only reason it's not number one, if anyone's wondering, is because I always hesitate whenever it's something like it says it might resemble Castles of Burgundy in some way. I don't want it to be just kind of very similar to Castles of Burgundy, and they maybe tweaked a tiny thing or two. Then it might not be as exciting for me. Now, if they've done a lot, a lot of different things, or really, or even sat back and thought I should have tweaked this, and they've made some really nice changes, I'll be pumped. But I'm just, I'm, I'm pumping the brakes just a hair. I mean, number two. Yep. That's not like super pumping the brakes. It's that's barely. You're coasting. I got a, you I got a, foot off I got a toe on the brake. Let your foot off the gas. You didn't really touch the brake. I'm pretending to <laughs> toe the brake right now. It's good. I'm excited. This is. I don't know. <laughs> <That's not laughs> I don't know. I wish we had more. And it, but here's the thing: all of the internet is just as hyped as we are that likes Castles of Burgundy. Which oh is my goodness! Everybody, right? Put in the comments if you don't like Castles of Burgundy. I'm what if this is identical to Castles of Burgundy, but it has different pictures and it's Tuscany? Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not. But I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. I, I am intrigued by. But that's this why one. I couldn't be number one. I needed a little more info. It does ha kind of have a, it has a feel of the art from the new upgraded versions of Castles of Burgundy, which we have not played yet. Uh, but it doesn't it kind of have the, a little bit of a like a. Uh, it just shows a box. I don't know the feel, yeah, the maybe. box feel. Yeah, who cares? Let's get, <laughs> let's get on to my number one. All right, who cares? <laughs> All right, so my number one, if you listen to the podcast, has not changed. That is Tekhenu Obelisk of the Sun. This is ridiculous. Why is it? <laughs> It's, all right, it's David uh, Turtsky uh, and Daniele Tassini. Just kidding. just kidding. Basically, because those guys are designing this game, that's almost reason enough for it to be my number one because those guys know how to make some board games. Board and Dice, nice publisher. Like, click on a couple pictures here. I'm fascinated by this picture that you're clicking on right now. Wait for okay. it. Super Wait fast internet. It. I don't know what's going on with my interwebs right now. Look at that, look at that glorious prototype. The, I mean, not, not like, obviously not that, but like the idea of that because- yeah. so it's dice drafting, yeah. and, and you're gonna have things that, uh, like a shadow, if you could see right here, where I do not believe you'll be able to draft certain dice or whatever, so, I, you know, dice drafting, I mean, I. I'm a uh, Taylor Walken. He's not as big of a fan of. Um, I, I mean, I like their games, man. I like their games. Uh, this looks like a really intriguing um, theme. I like this idea, this giant dice tower kind of in the middle where they're coming out. But I just think these guys make hits. This is going to be another hit. This is going to be a fantastic game. Um, let's see. I'll click on, you know, it's hard to. The art's know. beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. No, all kidding aside, this is one I'm 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 actually really excited. Oh, they're playing one. it right there, baby. I think yeah. uh, I think this is going to be a fun game. But that that obelisk in the center with the dice so that come cool. out and the shadow idea, like I think that's really cool. Now, if you want to learn more, like they actually did a great job. I wish other folks would do this. They have a ton, and I'm not going to do this to because this is just kind of a quick. What are we What are we interested in? But they have a lot about the game here. Look at all this, Dean. 
Like Borden Dice, are they the ones who post on it? Great job to go in, have a game, and like actually talk about scoring, the production, the, all these different like gods that you know that you can that you they do different actions or whatever things. It's just so cool. This game looks fantastic. I can't wait to play this game. I cannot wait to play this. This is going to be good. Yep. It is. You're interested in yeah, it. Yeah, I'm very interested. Top 20, 25, something like that yeah. for me, I would say. Um, I, hey, one thing we didn't mention at the very beginning. We've This is our top 20 anticipated games. What about our top 2019 games? We haven't even talked about those. That's for another video. Yep. If you click the I, <laughs> we'll, we will, yes. When we get it up, we will link it. But if, you, if there's no I, that means we don't have it up yet. That's right. It's just that we that's wanted to obvious. have some time to play some games that we haven't had a chance to play yet. But be looking forward to that. In the Within the next week or two. Sure, yeah. All right. <laughs> are you editing it? You are. Oh, boy. In the next Within month the next, or two. Within the next, like, three or four months, we will have this video up. Speaking of which, tell people how they can get in touch with us. If you're enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell for notifications for when we come out with new videos. We have a podcast where we talk about things like this as well on Spotify and iTunes and Stitcher and all that kind of stuff. Meepletown Games. We're also at Meepletown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we have a website. www. .meepletowngames.com. Do people still, still say that? W, uh, I started to, and that's why I made that weird. Because I was like, yeah. HTTP. Colon slash slash. And we are Board Game Geek Guild 3407. I just did six. Thanks for coming down to Meepletown. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Meepletown Games and connect with us on the Meepletown Guild, Guild number 3407 at BoardGameGeek.com and also subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel. And until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown.